Hey everybody, sorry I'm late, but stuff happens, you know what I mean? And I did wash my hair, and it looks a little better. I'm, I'm happy. Anyway, uh, the mail lady came, I looked up and it was 2 o'clock. You ever have that happen to you? The mail lady was at the door. I've been drinking my water today, so I had to go potty, and... And I forgot the game. I went in there to get the game. Hold on a second. Let me go get the game. I'll take the I'll take you with me. Here we go. I'm gonna take you with me. Yeah, that way it won't be too bad. You can see my flag on the back wall. Miss Molly won't know what to think about it. Here's the grand dog. Look at her, isn't she cute? Okay, I've got the game in hand, headed back around. Okie dokie. Shutting the door to the studio. Hey, my flag looks pretty good on the wall. I've got the game. We're good to go. Look at us. You went with me. Oh, yes, yeah, she's a she's a labradoodle. She's a doodle. <laughs> Yankee doodle. She's happy. She is one happy dog and she minds. She minds so much better than our dogs. I guess when you work with something and you teach them things, we just put puppy pads down and hope Molly teaches the little puppy to go outside. And it's been real good having Molly around. Because she teaches her. Yeah, Molly's a sweet dog. The other two dogs are outside because they've been barking. What is going on with my crookedness? There we go. I got the line straight. Need to put a... This is straight. It's... We put a level on it when we put it up there. Now, today is Thursday. It's Aaron Day. Tomorrow is Friday, which is date night. Clean out your car day. And guess what? Clean out your purse. Yep, clean out your purse. I mean, we could have a little game for just... In fact, we should do that right now. We should do this right now. Let's get a head start on cleaning out our purse day. While you're sitting here watching me, I want you to clean out your purse. You hear that? Don't gasp. Clean out your purse. You can do that while you're sitting watching me. So let's clean out our purse. That could be one of those blank tiles. And I just can't believe what I found on Amazon to yesterday when I was looking around. I found blank playing cards that you could write on. I found, um, I found uh, little tokens, hexagon tokens or little one inch square tokens that you could write on. I found business cards that you could write on. So there's any number of blank things to make a game out of. There were dice, little, little uh, you could put numbers on and roll them around. How cool is that? Cleaning out your purse, it really helps you to find things and put things away where they belong. Because we just stuff things. And I clean out my purse and I find change. And I give it to Robert. And he collects it all and goes and donates it. So I didn't have my bottle of water with me. But I have my copper cup. So it's it's kind of a mint julep cup. But it's not. This will be my 10th cup of water today. Now it's not a full cup. Because the full cup is 16 ounces. 
but I do about a half a cup. And yesterday, we we were going to go eat German last night. I didn't cook anything. I, I just stayed. I just was, um, I took a nap yesterday afternoon. I just kind of enjoyed the day. So I really didn't do a whole lot of work until last night. The copper cup came from Amazon. Where else would it come from? I think they're like mint julep cups or something. Anyway, somebody said it was good to get a little copper in your body. So I drink from this cup and I, I'm less likely to break it in, a, in my bathroom. I don't want to drop some something in my bathroom floor that um, might shatter because that's where I go barefoot. It's the only place in the house I really go barefoot except when I walk to bed. Now, drinking your water it was our habit for last month, and I've continued it into this month, and I did an experiment. I went a couple of days, and I didn't drink my 10 ounces, and I, I mean my 10 cups, and I gained, well, this cup holds 16 ounces. That's what I'm talking about. This cup holds 16 ounces. So only drink it about half full. I know how many ounces are in a cup. I I'm I had a home economics major and a science major and a math major in high school. So I know my numbers and I know my measurements. <laughs> now, one of the things, yes, Yesterday, I, I drank my 10 cups of water and I had two glasses of unsweet tea at, at, at dinner and I had salmon and a, a nice salad and uh, some broccoli. And they did something wrong on my salmon. I asked them to have it plain and they put seasonings on it and I don't like seasonings on my salmon. I want it plain. It's I'm scared to eat seasonings out because I have... I am very sensitive to MSG. I get really sick and it's not fun. And I don't like to do it, you know, 45 minutes from home. It's just don't don't want to eat anything with seasonings when I'm 45 minutes from home. And this morning I get up and and oh, I had my first major carbs at dinner last night because it was a holiday. And I didn't want to eat ice cream, but I had a piece of cherry pie. It was free pie Wednesday at Old Charlie's. So we had a piece of cherry pie. It was my first carbs in six weeks. And I thought, oh, I'm going to gain two pounds. Guess what? I lost seven tenths of a pound, which kind of blew me away that I had lost seven tenths of a pound when I ate carbs last night. So there you go. I don't know why, have no clue, but that's how it is. But I didn't overeat and I kind of drank my water. And for me, water is the key, especially when I'm cutting out carbs. So let's get back to, we're in zone one this week. When you walk into my house, you walk into zone one zone five and you look to the right and there is zone two the kitchen so my house is all open and a lot of houses these days are like this. we took down a couple of walls we took down an outside wall which um, held up our roof and we just when we remodeled our house we turned it upside down and that was uh, in the year 2000 we did that. And I'm so glad we did. We put all new hardwood floors throughout our house. They're almost 20 years old. They really need to be redone. But I have a kitty that is scared of everything. Just scared of everything. So if we redid our floors right now, she would probably stroke out on me. So we're just going to wait till till. Miss Miss Samantha is no longer with us to redo our floors. 
Yeah, folks, I do know how many ounces are in a cup. I do know that. This holds 16 ounces. It's bigger than a cup. It holds two cups because I've measured it. So I know how much my cup holds. So I only fill it half full. And I'm good. So let's let's clean out our purse while you're while you're talking to me and straighten up your credit cards and get them in in some you know some sort of order and any receipts you need to keep let me tell you a little secret if you've got some old old spiral notebooks that the kids use that are full up you can take uh, some scotch tape and you can start taping those receipts in the notebook in the spiral notebook just willy-nilly and then every Friday you take more receipts in it and then at the end of the year you can or even right now if you know what those receipts are for if they're tax deductible you can take a highlighter to them I don't drink any milk I am kind of allergic to milk don't drink milk at all mm -mm. so those of you who have cleaned out your purse here is is my question for you what's the strangest thing you found in your purse hmm tell me the strangest thing you found in your purse post them here strangest thing and maybe we'll uh, <coughs> I'll call them all out and we'll see how funny. I cleaned it out the other day. Nothing strange in there. We have had people find a baby diaper and their youngest child was 15. We have had some old cereal because of the children. Yeah, bullets. Hey, <laughs> that's pretty good. But a chip clip. Oh, that's funny. Tablecloth, nuts and bolts, a bag clip, crushed old candy, stray french fry, a grocery list from May. <laughs> oh, ketchup packet. That could be dangerous. That could be a mess. Old receipts from last year. Mine's boring. Paper from church. Well, that's good. Your purse is rocks. Your kid picks up rocks. A chicken nugget. Oh my. That was yours. Okay. Purse is good. Cough drops that melted in the side pocket. Keep it up, y'all. This is fun. A half cookie in a Ziploc baggie. A crochet hook. A foreign phone number. Hmm. Yeah, when you write them down on something, stick them in your purse, you forget whose it is. Jury bead I lost a year ago. <laughs> Jingle bell. Uh, somebody hasn't clean, cleaned their purse out since Christmas. Glitter. Oh, you have little girls. Uh, dog food. No idea. Wow. How, how long roughly should you spend on zones? Well, here's the deal. We give you a mission every day that's in your zone. It comes out in the flight plan and it's right there. And if you only do that, that day, that's in that zone. And after about three months, you've gone through your detailed cleaning list. I would say the most you need to spend on a zone would be 15 minutes. If that old library cards, a hedgehog quilt, a roll of scotch tape. Well, that could be useful if you're leaving a note for somebody. See, we, our purses are our catch all. And I have downsized my purse so much that I just have a small purse right now. It, I'll have to show it to you sometime. It's not a very big purse at all. And it's an RFID purse so that um, people can't scan your purse and get your numbers and stuff. 
and uh, off your credit cards and it's it's really good my p p phone goes in a pocket um yeah my concealed weapon will go in it too if i want to take it and oh he found money how many found money angie found 250 dollars wow how cool is that to find money angie's the winner that's a good one that is wonderful sometimes you find gift cards you just lots of things you can find now we keep our gift cards in the glove box so that we have the gift cards in robert's car having a small purse is a good thing it doesn't hurt your shoulder just lots of fun things having a small purse does for you <laughs> Y'all are all so funny. Uh, old box of milk duds. A penny. Oh, let's see. Now, let's talk about what I told you I was going to talk about this morning. Let's moving. Now, I have two nieces and... A good friend who are all real estate agents and when you put your house on the market you got to get rid of your clutter and when you get rid of your clutter your house seems bigger I know one time we got a testimonial from a lady and I probably told you about it but hey I've been I've slept and I don't remember if I have or not but I do remember this testimonial they lived in a 800 square foot house five kids a husband and the mommy so you got five seven people in an 800 square foot house now she started to declutter she got rid of her clutter and what happened is her house got bigger. Now think about a room being piled high in clutter. This room I'm sitting in was at one time piled to the ceiling because of stash and dash. Piled to the ceiling. There was a bathtub sitting right in front of that bay window. This room was piled high. And slowly but surely, over about a three month time period when I started flying myself, I would open up this door because the rest of the house was looking pretty good. This was still my dungeon. I would open up the door, grab a box, take it to my coffee table, which had, it was cleaned off. It looked pretty. And this is what I called my five minute room rescue. I would grab that box, then I would take that box and I would sort through whatever was in that box and either give away, put away, and throw away. Those three things, give away, put away, throw away. And I would put the giveaway stuff back in that box, take it to the car. The throw away stuff would go immediately in the trash. And the put away stuff, I had to go put it away right then, but it could not come back in this room. And now I have the most amazing room for me. I have beautiful things on my walls. I have the kitty corner, which has cat food, a cat bed, because the cat really likes, to, it's, it's a story off the ground. So, and I have my uh, St. Therese statue that my friend Leanne Ely gave me for my garden, but I really like it in here. And I have some stained glass hanging in the windows. I have a, just beautiful things on the wall, pictures that I've taken, pictures, pictures that Robert's taken. My favorite verses from the Bible, which is Hebrews 11.1, 1, the serenity prayer, which has the second verse in the serenity prayer to it. You never see that one. Let me, let me read that to you. The serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things 
I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And here's the second verse. This is the most important part. Living one day at a time, enjoying, uh, enjoying our mo enjoying one moment at a time. Wait, I might have to get up and go read it. Maybe I'll just turn this around so you can see it as I read it. Okay, let me flip this around. There it is. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. And that's by Reinhold Neubar. I, anyway, it's, that's the serenity prayer. And it's backwards. Yep, I just saw that. Anyway, let me turn it back on me. There we go. Trying not to make y'all dizzy, but I probably did. Put it in my little harness here. There we go. Back seated. That makes me happy. That serenity prayer is so beautiful. You know, we we're all taught the first part, but we never heard the second part. And I looked that up one time and it was just touching. It, it, where is the wisdom to find the difference? I can't find it. Well, it's sometimes we have to be quiet to find that wisdom. A lot of times we're just talking nonstop like I'm doing now. And we have to find that quiet place to figure out what that wisdom is. Sometimes it's just sitting still and not doing or not talking and just breathing when that wisdom comes to you. So let's get back to our game. We've cleaned our purse out. I got my jar. Let me close it up. Now I can't do the game with you because I like the way the wooden, wooden block sound. Makes me happy. You know, if you had an old Jenga game, that would work too. But you don't play anymore. But I'm going to reach in and I'm going to grab and this is from something we do with our weekly home blessing hour and this is windows so I want you to grab a purple rag and go wet it and I want you to do your front door your storm door your sliding glass door I want you to clean a window while you're listening to me. Just clean a window. It's kind of cool. You're going to be really surprised how fast it can get done. Uh-oh, that's not going to go there. I'll set it right there. I didn't do the cauliflower potato salad. We just decided last night that we were going to go out and we did let's talk about moving let's talk about moving again when you're getting ready to move getting all the clutter out of your house getting all that clutter out of the house first don't move any trash don't move anything you have two of, you know, saving, saving something because you might need it one day is not a reason to save it. 
you got to get it out of the house. You have to get it out of the house. So getting rid of things that you don't use, you don't love, and you don't have a place for because there's they're taking up all your storage places. A lot of people say, well, we got to sell this house. So I got to have more storage. Well, you don't need more storage. You need to get rid of what is cluttering up your storage. Because you got storage places, but there's there's clutter taking over their storage places. So get rid of the storage. Get rid of the clutter that's that's, you know, infringing upon your Wonderful storage. You bought your house because it had plenty of closets and plenty of storage places. But yet, you've stashed so much stuff in these places, you can't find anything. So over the next few months, we're going to start getting rid of things. And every time you bring something new home, get rid of two things. So if you get a new cup, like a new cup, get rid of two cups. Get rid of it. Some people this comes naturally to. Other people like to just hold on to things. And holding on to things is what keeps our houses in a mess. Because it makes it harder for us to clean to clean up after ourselves. And the more you get rid of, the, the better your home is going to look. It will happen. How often... Will you go like this? Will you do it? I do it continuously. I'm always looking for things to get rid of. I am always looking for things to get rid of. And I kind of go by zones. Yesterday I started making a list per zone of different things to declutter. So next week we are in our kitchens. Yes, our depression parents told us to hold on to everything. We might need it one day. And what happens with that is that depression mentality, our depre- that the depression happened in 1929. And a lot of people are gone, but they were raised by people who were raised by people who went through the Great Depression and they all held on to stuff. We have to let it go and bless someone else with our abundance and then we're going to be blessed in return because we're going to have a home that is a present to us because we can walk in our homes. And when you look at old houses, they had very little closet room and now everybody wants a closet the size of your bathroom. We don't need that much room. Yes, your mother probably being that way. She has a house full of clutter and you're probably never going to change her. So don't, don't try to push decluttering down her throat. Eventually you'll have to do it after she's gone. Life is too short to make your mother miserable. It really is. Love her the way she is. She can't help how she was taught. But we can change ourselves. That's all we can really do is change our own attitudes. Do you hear me? That's all we have control over. Now we can teach our children to work towards things, have rewards and have fun and play a fun game. I got a great testimonial a couple of days ago about a mom who... who mix some dish liquid with some water and squirted it on the floor, put the kids in their bathing suits and told them they could slip and slide on old dish towels and things. They just couldn't stand. And she got the cleanest floor in 30 minutes and the next day they wanted to do it again. When you can get your children having fun and, and get your kitchen floor clean at the same time, I think that's a win. That's a win for everybody. It's just, you got to get it done. How, 
have fun. Get rid of your clutter. Make it a, a five-minute room rescue to just if a room that's really bad. Just go get one box. Deal with it fast. And, and don't beat yourself up. Just let this stuff go. Get it to the car. Donate it next time you're out. Amazing things are going to happen. So I'm ready to take, I mean, we've talked a little bit about moving, about getting rid of things. So let's talk about how we pack up. Now, as you're packing things up, I want you to get uniform size boxes. You can order them on Amazon. They'll send them, they'll ship them to you the next day. And you can order a kit that has a certain amount of boxes. You can put the boxes in each room and every day pack up two or three. If maybe you want to pack up five boxes a day, get you um, an office in a bag. Let me find one here. Here's our new color purple one. And put you a notebook in it and put some paper in there. And this is going to become your moving control journal. And what you're going to do is we're going to um, put you some magic markers in here. You probably need an apron, like a nail apron that you would get at Lowe's. They're a dollar. Put them on. Put your markers, your tape, and your um, packing tape. And... I would get a set of colored markers with five colors and use the colors that you use on your calendar for your um, say you have a big family and you color code some some labels for for your family and mo mom is blue and dad is so you can color code your boxes and number your boxes according to um, chronological. Each room has a color code and each room starts with box one. The, the lo and you start by packing up things you don't use every day. You start by packing up the things you don't use every day. And the lower the number of box, the the least amount of use it gets so you know if it's a low number box then it's not something that has to be unpacked immediately somebody lives in my county jenny lives in my county so so start packing up, like you could pack up things in your kitchen or your dining room that you don't use, like your china. You could get that stuff packed and staged in that room. So take one wall and start staging the boxes against that wall. You can, you can pack things up, you know, the right way with the bubble wrap and all the good stuff. You can do it. And not be in a hurry because it's that last minute push where you just start cramming everything in a box and mark it miscellaneous. And that's where you lose stuff. Carol wants to know what's the difference in the colored rags. There is no difference. The purple has a little more dye in it than the silver or the bronze. But these are the ones we have on sale right now with the rubber swisha. Sorry for the change. I can't find the rubber swisher. This whole set is half price right now in honor of, of um, Swish and Swipe Month. Same fabric, same everything. Now back to packing. Pack the things up that you don't use much. And then the higher number box, those are the boxes you're going to unpack first. Now, we have a moving control journal, and this book has a list of things. 
in it too. Sync Reflections has, has a whole big list. We have a whole section on our website with lots of tips. <coughs> Sorry. And every day, pack up a few boxes. Eventually, you're going to get to the things, the last week, uh, the things that you use every day that are going to need to be packed away. And then you're going to get back to having just a few things left. And that's going to be your last push to get things in the car that you're going to take with you to the new house because those are the things you're going to unpack at the new house first. So let's think about this. The first thing you need to unpack, you've got to have a set of sheets for each bed. So set of sheets for each bed. This is your box that you're going to take with you. Or you can put it all in a suitcase and put it in your car. Do not pack garbage. That's true. A set of sheets for each bed, because those are going to come out of the truck first. Then you're going to need kitchen stuff. You're going to need your coffee maker, your maybe your toaster oven. Um, you may need paper plates and napkins and silverware and glasses. But you may want to put a stash of paper cups and things or, or styrofoam cups or whatever you're going to use. Solo cups, I don't care. But because you're going to need glasses when you're when your movers come in or when you whoever's helping you and you're going to feed them pizza and you're going to get a lot of help that way if you feed them they will come and then as the boxes come off the truck you are the director because you've put the code in place and you may want to take um a sticky note or a a note card that you've colored the same color of those boxes over the kids' room. So if Ethan, like Ethan is purple, you color code a purple note card to match that and tape it on the door facing or on the door. And then the movers can take that to that room. It's going to make unpacking so easy, so easy. Don't take clothes that don't fit anybody. The, we don't know when the sale's going to end. Right now, we're looking to the 15th. But that's all we got right now. Everybody's on vacation this week, so it's just me and Laura and Kathy working and Rebecca working. So we're all still working even though everybody's on vacation. Unpacking is another thing. Now, tomorrow there's going to be an essay about unpacking. The main thing you've got to remember is get your kitchen set up first. Because if your kitchen is ready to go, you're not having to go out and eat and spend money. You can, you know, clean your freezer out and put it in an ice chest and take it directly to the new house and put it back in the freezer. And you're good because the frozen food is going to be ready. You may have to go to the store and get milk and eggs and, and bread and stuff, but you're going to take your freezer with you and it's going to be packed up in an ice chest, you know, according to if you're just across town or across country. It's a big difference. If you're, if you're across country, you need to bless someone else with the food in your freezer. Pack, unpack your kitchen first. It'll make your life easier. You're, you're going to have to have towels for everybody. You're going to have to have pajamas for everybody. You're going to have to have um, washcloths. You need your pet food. You need people snacks. So you're kind of, it's kind of like going camping. Yes, we can help with paper clutter, but we're dealing with moving right now. And if you're not moving, I want you to pretend to move. Just pretend to move. Just start boxing up things 
that you don't use often and put them in a storage room down in the basement or in your shed and then label what's in there so you can find it again but the more stuff you get out of your rooms the better it's going to be for you that the more open your house is going to feel so bless someone with your abundance right now i wish i had a purple chair i wish i had a purple um purple cover for my chair that would look so pretty wouldn't it maybe one day i'll get me a purple cover so let's have some fun pretending to move a lot of people are moving a lot of them are my niece is getting ready to move she and her husband have been stationed in another place and they're packing up but they already sold their house so they've packed one time and she decluttered she was vicious with her decluttering and the military move moves her and they can be you don't want the military packing you up because they will pack up wet clothes in the wash machine they'll pack up everything i don't have a purple blankie isn't that interesting i have an idea though i may find me some purple fabric and just make me a cover for for just the top part of the chair that would work i could do that i'm a good seamstress we have dealt with paper clutter a lot october is our month to focus on paper clutter but if you remind me i may do a show next week on paper clutter but the main thing you got to keep in mind with paper clutter is the ohio method only handle it once get rid of your hot spots and put things where they belong use an office in a bag for your bills that way you they have a place and you can find them uh, if you have um, a lot of paper clutter on your desk i want you to get three boxes preferably banker's boxes because they stock, stock, stack stack pretty well. My grandmother taught me how to sew. Um, they stack pretty well and clean off the left side of your desk, put it in the left box, labeled left. Clean off the right side of your desk, put it in the right box. Clean off the center of your desk and put it in the center box. Now put back the stuff put back the stuff that you want like like your pencil holder your favorite vase feather duster feather dusters like to be out in the open everybody and let's just have some fun with getting rid of the paper clutter you can't move paper clutter but you got to find all the stuff 95 percent of what is on your desk is trash because that's where you've dumped the mail there's catalogs uh, there's just not a whole lot of stuff you need to keep there's just not a lot of stuff that you need to keep Uh, let's see only handle it once that's that's the key and that's the key to packing up your house too only handle it once because you've got to declutter that desk before you can pack that stuff up and hey you may realize that you like your house and you really don't want to sell it I'm reading some of your comments. <laughs> the Ohio method is can be utilized every way it can. It really can. So, does anybody have any more questions? We got 15 minutes to go. I'll take some questions. Liz, will, Liz or Patty will pin them to the top and I'll uh, answer them. 
So packing can be a breeze when you take baby steps. If you try to do it all in one day, will the carpet sweeper do stair steps? Well, the carpet sweeper is about a foot wide. And yes, it probably would. It gets pretty much to the edge, but you really don't have room going like this. You might have to turn it sideways and do the steps. But the rubber sweeper does a real good job on steps. Somebody just bought four feather dusters. <laughs> I get notifications on who buys what. Post it here. There it comes in. My husband is... Oh, I missed that. Somebody pinned some stuff so I can see them because they go so fast I can't read them. My husband suggested hiring movers um, to empty our house and start over. We've moved in quickly and never organized, and I'm not so sure. I like the idea, but it terrifies me at the same time. Don't do that. You'll never find anything. You have to put it where it belongs, and you have to establish a place. Even if you have to use post-it notes everywhere till you remember where those places are, don't do that. That would not be good. Now, if you need help getting rid of things or helping you move, I recommend a company that my nephew works for called Bellhops. Bellhops.com. If you're doing a crosstown move, these kids can help you. It's a it's a it's an amazing go check them out. Bellhops.com. And they can help you move. And they're good at it, too. They can help you move in college campuses. They can help you move house. They can help you get rid of clutter. They can do lots of things for a small fee when you really think about it. How would you work these ideas with a cross-country military? I missed that. Somebody pinned too quick. Well, you've got to declutter before the military moves you. You have to declutter. And you've got to get yourself across the country, so you need to pack your suitcases of the things you're going to need when you get to that place because your, your stuff may not be there at the time that you get there. So everybody needs a suitcase of clothes, and you need your coffee maker, a toaster oven, a skillet, a pan to boil water, just the basics, and you can get by. Let's see, I know you are on the moving topic, but can you answer my question? Where do I put stuff when I have no closets? Well, if you get down I have most of my clothes, not my good clothes that I wear for speaking engagements. They're hanging in a closet, but I have most of my clothes in bins in my bathroom on a shelf. I have one, two, three, four bins. Most clothes can be folded up unless they're good dress clothes. and. You don't have to have a whole lot of space to put your clothes because we, we don't wear, we wear 10% of the clothes we have in our closets. So when you get rid of the stuff that you don't wear, now here's a good way to know whether you've worn something or not. So seasonally, take all your clothes in your closet and turn them around, the hooks around backwards. So you have to go back and then pull it out and then at the end of the month you can see what you've worn and what you haven't worn and it's a real eye-opener because we don't wear many clothes at all where do you store your feather duster I 
they're in vases all over the house because I have every feather duster we've ever sold. And I have an umbrella stand by the front door that gets morning sun. Feather dusters do not like dark closets. Do not put your dark, your feather duster in a, a broom closet because you're going to kill it. You're going to kill it because what happens, dust mites, when you do dust, dust mites eat feathers. You take them out and shake it, but dust mites do not like sun, so they die. And you shake your feather duster outside. Now, once a year, maybe twice a year, if you've dusted something that's really dusty, and you may want to take your feather duster and give it a bath. It looks like a wet chicken. And you take your feather duster and you put a little baby shampoo on it and rinse it in warm water and then you can blow dry it or hang it out to dry. How do I shake the mindset? Oh, I better not get rid of that. I might need it someday. Well, I'll tell you how you shake that mindset with this one quote. And my husband gave it to me. And the quote is, you are prosperous in proportion to what you can do without. If you're holding on to everything, you're in oh poor me mode. And when you're being pitiful, you're being whiny, and whiny never could do anything. As my granny said, can't never could do anything. So let go of that whiny attitude. And, and when you hear yourself say, I might need that one day, turn it around and say, somebody else needs it worse than me. I'm going to bless them with it. Turn it into a nice thing, a blessing. Because when you give it away, the blessings come back to you tenfold. And we have had testimonial after testimonial that agrees with me on that and agrees with the Bible on that. When you bless someone else. Now, I want you to think about this. Think about the Israelites from Exodus. And the Israelites were wandering for 40 years in the desert. And God fed them every day. But those who hoarded the manna from heaven, who held on to it, what happened to that manna? It turned to worms. What happens to the things that you hold on to? It makes your life miserable. So it's pretty much worms. So bless someone else with your abundance. Now, on the Sabbath day, God gave them permission to gather, gather enough for two days. But then they used it up. So let go of that attitude. And when you hear yourself say, I might need this one day, and you're saying it in here. This is the body clutter that's in our head. I might need this one day. So I'm going to hold on to it. All you're doing is holding on to worms. And we don't like worms. Let go of it. Because it's killing you. It's killing you. Let it go. How do you keep your pup? Oh, let me away from your duster. Well, you can put it up on a base, on a desk. It's a pretty thing to put on your desk. These two, I have a, a purple base over there and one here. My feather duster, my feather duster in the, um, the umbrella stand, that he's ne she's never bothered. So I don't really kn know how to keep it, but you can put it up high. You can put it high. You can set it on your kitchen counter or on your dining room table. I don't care where you put it, but you can get it on the top of the piano. You can, on your mantle, you can keep it a lot of different places. How 
how do you work? I can't see it. How do you work those ideals into a cross country move? Ah, that went away again. I can't see the end of it. Do you have more questions? Yep, bring them on. I'm on a roll now. Bring them on. When Let me talk to you about Beanie Babies. Beanie Babies was a Ponzi scheme many years ago. People thought they were going to put their kids through college with Beanie Babies. And it just didn't happen because you want to know why? It's called supply and demand. They flooded the market with Beanie Babies just like they do with plates and all kinds of things, commemorative plates. And people saved these Beanie Babies. They were going to sell them. And, and a lot of Beanie Babies were destroyed in floods. And the only ones... I've, I've been to a Beanie Baby funeral. Yes, a friend of mine got flooded out in a storm. And... Her, they had saved Rubbermaid tub after Rubbermaid tub. And when Hog Lagoon water gets in your Rubbermaid tubs, it is not pretty. So we had to have a Beanie Baby funeral. How do you get to bed early when, when you're not a morning person but get energy late in the evening. Well, you've got your days and nights mixed up. Has your baby ever done that? And how do you do it? Well, then you got to get up early one morning and force yourself to stay up. And you may have to work your schedule around. Staying up late is not an excuse. I, last night, I went to bed at 1 o'clock. I'll be honest, I was on a roll, but I took a two-hour nap yesterday afternoon. And if I hadn't taken a nap yesterday afternoon, I would have been in bed by 11.30. An hour and a half later, you kind of reset your clock. So start moving your bedtime now. Those of you who have little kids that are going to be starting school and they've never gone to school and they've slept as late as you, you need them to sleep, then you're going to have to start moving their bedtime back. Right now they go to bed at 10 o'clock. Well, you're going to have to move it back 15 minutes because August will be here before we know it. And school will be starting in a lot of places. Uh, even if it's September, you're still going to have to move the bedtime back until it, they can get in bed at 8 o'clock because they're going to have to get up at 6 and catch the bus and get ready to go to school so they're not... not um, not stressed out in the morning. How do you keep your sink shiny when another adult leaves dishes everywhere and soaking wet dishcloth in the sink? Well, you got to quit fussing. You got to quit fussing. If they're in the sink, you need to be thankful. Is the dishwasher empty and it's got dirty dishes in it? But how long does it take you to squeeze out that dishcloth Put it in the dirty clothes, put a clean one out, and put the dishes in the dishwasher. We gotta, we gotta pick our battles. You just gotta pick your battles. You can tell everybody that you'd like to have the sink clean and shiny when you get up in the morning, but if it's just a few dishes, it's better than them being in the living room or their bedrooms. So be thankful that they're in, in the kitchen. Uh, Fly Lady Liz knows what I'm talking about. She really knows. Because I had to have a little come to Jesus meeting talk with her about this one thing a few weeks ago. So we all have to pick our battles. It's better than them, be it in the basement, in the family room. August, our habit of the month is going to be laundry. We got to get our laundry done so kids can get ready to go to school. September is our before bed routine. That's our most important routine of the whole day 
especially if you got kids going to school. So everybody, get our messages. If you get our messages and you sign up for a Gmail account on your um, on your Android phone, just sign up with a Gmail account for your Android phone and the messages are going to pop up on your phone. You don't need an app. You're going to have the messages popping up. And there you have your app. Just set up a Gmail account just for that. And it, make the notifications, let you know when a message comes in. You can set up two or three accounts, email accounts for your phone. And when you get a message from File Lady, spend two minutes and read it. Just read it. I ended up getting one of those sink tubs. Well, that works. The dishpan works great. Empty, as soon as your dishwasher quits running, put your dishes away so that you always have a dirty dish disposal unit. What's the deal with decluttering the stupid, the stupid things my three-year-old gets attached to. How long do I need to keep the oven thermometer? How long do I need to keep the oven thermometer in my living room? Well, go put it back in the oven where it belongs. Everything has a place and everything in its place. That's what my granny said. Everything has a place and everything in its place. And can't never could do anything. If you don't think you can do something, by golly, you won't be able to. But if you think you can, you will. I don't have a dishwasher. A dish tub would never work. Yeah, it will because you just said you couldn't do it. It's not going to work. But if you put that dish pan underneath the kitchen sink to put the daily, just the few dirty dishes you mess up during the day, then you pick the tub up, you wash the dishes when you're washing your supper dishes. And then you put all your dishes away. I had a mother-in-law who never owned a dishwasher in her whole life. I had two mother-in-laws that never owned a dishwasher. And never owned a dryer either. And they both hung their clothes up and they washed their own dishes. It can be done. I promise. Well, folks, I've been running my mouth for an hour and well, I haven't quite gone an hour yet because I have, I was late getting started. Let's see. Yes, I have gone. That's, I'm seven minutes after. It work, It does work. But if you tell yourself it's not going to work, it won't. I can't change your mind. Only you can change your mind. Only you can change your mind. And you don't want to be a pain about fussing at everybody because we got to get rid of that martyred attitude about nobody helps me around here. That's the worst thing you can do to your family. You just push them away. But if you show them that you can do it without their help and you have a kind word, I mean, if you wake up in the morning and you find dishes in your kitchen sink, thank them for putting the dishes in the kitchen sink. And just say, it only took me a little bit to put them in the dishwasher. Good to go. Get rid of this attitude, that this martyred attitude. Because a martyred attitude is going to do nothing but run people away from you. I love you all. I will see you tomorrow morning because we're talking about Sink reflections. Got my magic wand here. You'll be so surprised at how much people are going to help you. We have gotten testimonial after testimonial of how wonderful it is once they stop fussing at their family over stupid things. What did uh, Forrest Gump Forrest Gump's mother always said, stupid is as stupid does. <laughs> We're not stupid. 
we are smart cookies and I have figured out a way to get your family to help you but it has to do with your mouth and you have to be nice if everybody would just be nice this world would be a much better place it would be such a much better place we just have to be kind to each other we have to pick up the trash you know you're walking down the sidewalk and there's some nasty trash on the on on the side of the pick it up you're gonna pass the trash can and put it in a trash can don't say well I didn't throw that out there or no you didn't throw that out there because you you don't do that sort of thing but some people do and we don't have to live with trash in our community if we just pick it up we don't have to live with dirty dishes all around our house we got to pick it up not say I didn't put that there you know, once a day, put out the call for anybody with dirty dishes in, in, in their bedroom. Bring them in here. I'm going to wash dishes. Thanks very much. I know I'm yelling. Sorry about that. We have to change our attitude because our change in attitude is all we can do. We can't change them. But you might be surprised that they're watching you. They are watching you and they are following your example. I will never forget a testimonial we got where a lady was folding clothes and her seven, eight-year-old daughter was helping her fold clothes and she grabbed her daddy's underwear. He was a Navy guy and he, he she grabbed his underwear and she started folding it. And mommy says, no, honey, I'll fold daddy's underwear. And she put her little hands on her hips and she says, well, I might as well do it because I'm going to be doing it for the rest of my life. Where did that little girl hear that? It came out of your mouth. Stop it. Stop it now. Stop it forever. I love you all. And let's curb that mouth. Somebody just drove up in my driveway. See you later.